Hello and welcome to another episode of Sandy Killer Projects. Today we're going to go over how to change the um, hydraulic fluid and uh, the hydraulic fluid filter and the hydrostatic filter on the Coyote CS2410. Um, before we get started, there's a couple things I wanted to uh, talk about. Um, this video will be our 30th video that we've uh, now put out um, at any one time. Also, our channel um, this month will be two years old. Uh, we should be uh, quickly approaching, if not already, just past uh, 500 subscribers, uh, which is a pretty good feat. So, as always, I'm going to say uh, please like, share, and definitely subscribe. Uh, we're about halfway to the monetization point. And as you can see, my dog Gunner is uh, checking out the tractor. Uh, so, let's, uh, let's get started. All right, we look underneath the tractor towards the back, uh, towards the rear axle. Um, you'll see right here is the hydraulic filter. Um, and then underneath that, further behind, there's a, bla a brass um, nut right here. This is actually your drain plug. Um, it takes a 19 millimeter or three quarter. Um, you just put it on it, release it, and drain your fluid into your drain pan. Drain pan. But uh, be aware, um, this hydraulic system holds 13 quarts, which is approximately three and a half gallons of fluid. You need either a drain pan big enough uh, to, to do that much fluid, um, or you need um, multiple uh, containers to dump it into. Um, in my case, I have a 16 quart uh, drain pan, so I don't really have to deal with uh, switching them in and out. But if in the event you have like a 10 quart that's smaller, you're going to end up having to sneak this guy back in while the fluid's rushing out. So uh, we'll take this off and then we'll go over how to get the guard out. Your hydraulic uh, filter, as I said, is here. Your HST filter is back in there. So uh, you have to take this guard off uh, and then you have to take this guard off to get the hydraulic filter. So I'll uh, start draining the fluid and then we'll go over that. All right, so there it is draining. Um, as you can see, the, the oil is coming out golden colored. Now, you can't think about this like it's a, like an engine. Uh, this, uh, this fluid just gets pumped around back and forth. It doesn't get um, pushed between a bunch of wear parts that cause it to turn black. It doesn't get heated up with the spark plug uh, burning gasoline or diesel off of it. The oil doesn't turn black. It should come out this kind of honey color. Um, especially uh, because you're only supposed to, you're, you're supposed to do this about every 200 hours. We're, we're coming up on 200 hours in this tractor. This is a 2016 tractor. We bought it two years old in 2018 with about 50 hours on it. It's now 2022, so it's taken us that long to put uh, 200 hours on the tractor, and um, we, we use this pretty heavily. It actually needs to do a bunch more work coming up soon. So um, I didn't realize my drain container was gonna be as big as it is. I'm gonna have to let this thing completely drain out and then uh, move the pan out of the way before I can get into where the filters are. Okay, now that the fluid is drained, uh, we're gonna take the guard off of the uh, hydraulic filter. Um, the guard has two bolts in it. One of them is right here. This one that, I, that I'm showing you right here is through bolted, so you need um, a wrench for the back as well. The other side um, goes into the casing, so you only need um, you only need the wrench to get it out. Then, uh, to get to the hydrostatic filter, um, you need to remove this uh, this guard right here. There are four bolts on it. One here, here, and one on each of the corners. Those also only need the wrench. Now, the trick with this is, um, I don't know why Coyote did this, but um, most of the hardware on this thing is a 12 millimeter, so make sure you use a 12 millimeter wrench. If you try to use a 13, you'll end up stripping these. Um, so I've already uh, started taking the bolts out of this. Um, they're already all loose. I was doing that while the uh, fluid was draining. Um, I'm going to take this and this off. Um, I have seen some people say you can like swing this out of the way. There's another video on uh, YouTube where the guy does that. I don't really want to do that, especially with the oversized drain container that I have. I need the space to be able to drop the filter off of it. All right, so once you have the guards off, it's just like uh, like doing a car filter. You just put a strap wrench on it. Um, I've still got the drain pan out of the way, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna crack this guy open, and then uh, we'll we'll move on to the hydrostatic filter. 
also these are painted in place uh, so you gotta push kind of hard on them to get them to break loose so now that, that one's broke loose um, I'll get the drain pan back underneath there and then I'll uh, work on the hydrostatic filter which is up there all right there it is the hydraulic filter off uh, the hydraulic filter if you look at it it's not gonna have any numbers on it the as I mentioned the hydraulic filter is installed uh, early in the process so they they paint these things with the uh, hydraulic filter in place um, the hydrostatic filter does have the number still on it they put that on afterwards so again I'm just gonna break this loose and then uh, I'll uh, take it off and then we'll go over filters what they are where they go which one's which all right so these are the factory replacement parts um, the filter for this one, for the hydrostatic filter, the smaller one that's up higher, is T2555-38021. And it says right on it, say HST filter. Okay, then your um, hydraulic filter is a T2555-38031. Okay, these filters are about $30 a piece, um, maybe even a little bit more if you can't find them for that price. Um, I wanted to try and find something uh, cheaper, just a regular brand that you'd be able to get at like an auto parts store. Uh, the HST filter, no one seems to make it. It looks very similar in size to a lot of other ones, but because of the filtration uh, medium in it, there isn't uh, ones that aftermarket companies sell that I know of. Um, so. Uh, this is what I did end up finding. Uh, Wix was very helpful and they actually do specially make uh, hydraulic filters for tractors. So their number was 51712 if you want to try and get that. That filter is only like $10, $15. And I don't necessarily recommend Fram for these, um, but their number was P3651. Most Fram filters um, start with a PH, so the P recognizes as a hydraulic filter. Um, you're not going to find these readily available in an auto parts store in most cases. Uh, the P filters are not um, a, a regular stocking item at most places like that. But uh, most auto parts stores that stock Wix will end up having the 51712. Um, so uh, those are my recommendations for those. Um, I'll go ahead and start putting these back on and then we'll uh, get everything back together. Okay, hydraulic fluid is uh, thin and viscous. Um, if you were to pre-fill this filter by the time you got it up to a 90 degree to get it into the location it would be empty. So the only thing that I do recommend because it's basically like doing a like a car oil change make sure you put some of the the uh, hydraulic fluid onto the seal and then it goes just like a regular uh, auto uh, car filter you just you put it up and spin it in into place and then once it gets snug you go quarter past snug and then uh, once you're a quarter past snug, it's set. Um, also make sure, just like with an oil change, your old O-rings on your old filters came down with them. Don't let them stay in place. You can see over there there's no O-ring on it, and it's on the filter there. So just make sure that the, uh, the, the filters, um, O-ring, the old ones come off, and then uh, uh, make sure you uh, pre-lube your seals. As you can see, I put the guards back in place. Um, I will note though that the one right here is uh, very difficult. It's just in a very bad location. It's hard to get um, a wrench into here or in here or in here. That'll move very well. Um, you're just going to have to fight with it. Also, you need to definitely make sure you get that one on the other side back in because it goes through the casing, not just into the casing, it goes through. So um, you could actually end up having a leak if you don't have it in or tight enough. Uh, and they are all 12 millimeter. All right, so next we'll fill it up and I'll show you how to do that. At the back of the tractor where the three link hooks up, there's a PTO area you'll see down here. Uh, mine isn't used. I, I do use the three link. I have that uh, scraper box on that. Um, if you look in between this square, there's a filler plug right here. Um, this needs to be uh, unscrewed. Um, they're a little tight. I actually had a wrench that fit over this that I used to uh, loosen it. You unscrew this guy out and then you put a transmission funnel into it. Um, so I'm going to get this the rest of the way out and then I'll show that. So that's the easy way to get the funnel into there. Um, I'm also going to show you this. Um, like I said, it's 13 liters 
for um, the fill-up. So what I did, uh, most most people that replace the uh, HST fluid end up buying a five gallon bucket because it's easier. Um, the problem is, is it's in liters and you have to do a little math to, to convert it. Um, all I did was figure out the space from where the fluid starts to where it stops and then divided it into five different sections which gave me each gallon and then uh, this is going to take three and a half gallons. This will be roughly the point where I need to stop uh, filling it up at. Fortunately there's no real way for me to hold uh, the bucket and show it getting filled. It's going to be a very slow process of me holding up a five gallon bucket trying to dump it all in there. but. Um, approximately a hair less really when it comes down to it uh, than three and a half gallons is uh, what, it, what it takes to fill this thing. Alright, once your uh, reservoir is filled up, the only uh, note I would make with that is make sure that the o-ring is really clean before you put it back down or you're going to end up pushing dirt down into your reservoir. So uh, then start up your tractor and uh, just check your hydraulics. Everything should work properly. You shouldn't see any jerking or flailing. I haven't turned up the idle on the tractor yet. All this is is just making sure everything's turning like it's supposed to be um, and doing what it's supposed to do. And then same thing, I got a three link in the back, so we'll lift the three link. And that seems to be working exactly as it's supposed to. And then uh, once you once you have a good idea that everything is working, take a look underneath the tractor. Make sure there's nothing dripping off any of the filters, which there's not because I've already pre-checked. Okay, so that's it for the uh, hydraulic and hydrostatic filter change on the Coyote CS2410. Um, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, thank you. Uh, it's because of people like you that we've been able to be uh, making this channel for the last two years now. Uh, again, congrats on the uh, 30 videos on our channel. Uh, what makes it possible is you guys like sharing and subscribing so please keep subscribing uh, we'll keep making more videos thanks